All right, yo, what is going on, everyone? This is episode two of Conversations with Brian and Elijah. I'm Brian, and this is Elijah. Elijah. Um, our last episode was a bit of a pilot where we just kind of introduced ourselves and introduced what our mission for the podcast is. Mm -hmm. um, but this one, this podcast is going to be a little bit more um, based around a topic instead of just introducing ourselves. Um, so we're really excited to kind of show you what our next um, topic looks like. And over the course of the podcast, we're excited to see it grow and, and mature over time. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So today uh, on this podcast, episode two, uh, we want to talk about uh, really, really bluntly, just intellectualism is, is dying. Uh, it, that's what it feels like, at least. And we kind of want to go into why that is and maybe what some of the factors are. Why, why is intellectualism dying? Um, and how do we get people to, to think more? That's really what this podcast is all about, is um, empowering people with the knowledge uh, to change their life and the world and to acquire knowledge to have guests on to teach us and um, really just a whole knowledgeable podcast. So yeah, Brian, I don't know how about, I don't know how you feel, but doesn't it kind of feel like, um, you know, maybe looking back at history uh, you know, one of the most notable things is people were reading more, right? Literacy rates uh, you know, people were really, really just reading. And today it's just like, you know, people hardly ever read. And I kind of have a theory about that. Um, if I should introduce that now, um, Please introduce, introduce that now. Yeah. So I don't know about you, man, but in school, I'm in high school right now. I know that you're in college, uh, UCI, but it, you know, the, the thing that I have a problem with in school is you have to read certain books and it's like, they give you these books in like, you know, your language arts class and you might not necessarily even like them, but they force you to read them. And when you're forced to read something that you don't even like, it starts to associate a negative emotion to reading. So then whenever you think about reading, you think of, you know, all the negative and all this sucks. And I, that really just makes people not read. I think that if we let people read what they want to and they get satisfaction from it, you know, if you read a book that can solve a problem. Um, and you, you read it and then you go and solve the problem. You see that, wow, this stuff actually works. Knowledge is powerful. Um, you're going to have a more positive feeling towards reading. Um, but I just feel like the school system, you know, by them forcing it, it's really starting to, um, just build a negative association with reading. And really they start that from an early age, like first grade, but I don't know. Did you like, did you like reading books in, in high school or what are your thoughts? Um, on well, so I remember in middle school, we had this like AR program where you would yeah. like select which books you could yeah. read By points. Um, and then you'd get points associated with that. Um, and, you know, naturally there was just some kids that didn't really like that, you know, based on the whole point system. But it was interesting because I get, I got to select the books that I wanted to read, right? Mm -hmm. Reading for pleasure versus reading for intellect, right? And when you read for pleasure, as you age, you tend to read for more intellectual things for pleasure right definitely um so but for sure in high school um you're a little bit more you can't really read the books that you want to read um and so that conditions you and even in college um it's it's a little bit more it's a little bit different because you get to pursue the major that you want to pursue and like you know, obviously, like, there's yeah. some philosophy books that you may not like as other or whatever major you decide, decide to pursue. Um, and then textbooks are, you know, something completely different. Yeah. Um, but, but, yeah, for sure, I think, you know, what you're getting at, 100%. But, interestingly enough, um, what do you think about the whole, like, alternative? Like, what's the alternative, right? So, people, people aren't reading. Instead, they're going on their phone. Yeah, right? and, and, they're, and they're looking at all these things. Um, I know before we, I think we talked about um, and the whole entertainment thing, right? Yeah, you know, you know, it's really interesting that you mentioned the phones. Um, I have a lot to say about that, but it just literally hit me right now. It's like, it, it's not the reading that people hate because people are reading constantly on their phones, right? It's what they're reading, though. It's what they're reading. It's not reading. It's, it's what they're reading. I mean, people are on Instagram reading tons of comments, you know, reading the text posts. Um, they're reading articles, they're reading uh, text messages, all that stuff. So we're constantly reading all day, but it's like, we're not reading things that make us think or challenge us or stimulate us. Maybe some, some do, but it just feels like a majority doesn't, um, you know, and, and the other thing too, is it's like, 
uh, not to not to get off topic, but it just feels like there's a stigma around reading, like it's not cool or whatever. Uh, but to me, that's crazy, right? Because reading, right? The whole idea that reading is not cool is crazy, and the, and the reason why is because you know it's cool to be uh, wealthy and to be successful and all that, but it's not cool to put in the work, and the work is reading a lot of the times. I mean, I look at some of the richest people in the world and they, they read like crazy. I mean, I think Warren Buffett says that he reads like 500 pages a day. Yeah. 500 pages a day. That's more than some people I've read in their, you know, last decade probably, you know? Yeah. So, did you see the, uh, the Bill Gates, uh, Netflix documentary? Netflix did like a documentary on Bill Gates, like a three part series. I heard of it, but I didn't actually see it. So in that, uh, documentary, literally, like I, I, I couldn't believe it. Um, he literally carries around a bag of like eight to nine books, literally a bag of eight to nine books. And, you know, he says, you know, he commutes a lot. He's in the car a lot. So, you know, he's on planes and, and a bunch of stuff. So, you know, he wants to maximize his time yeah. by carrying that bag of books and then selecting, you know, which book he wants to comb through. Yeah. Um, I, that's awesome. Honestly, like I, that's kind of how, uh, it's kind of how I am. I always carry a book on me, you know, in class, if I finish my work, um, you know, before everybody else or just before it's due, you know, I pull out a book and just start reading it um, while I wait for everybody else to finish or whatever. Um, or, you know, in the car I read. Um, and so I don't know, don't know what happened. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I'm not sure what happened. It just low key disappeared. What disappeared? The screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just for a second, it just like wouldn't be. All right, there you are. There. You can. It's fine. Click that. We can chop that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. What were you saying? Uh, so no, like I always read. Um, uh, whenever I have time, I try to be really efficient with it. So I always carry a book on me. You know, in class. Um. I, you know, if I finish my work, uh, before it's due or before we have to turn it in, you know, I pull out a book, read it really quick. Um, just read a page or two, right. And that, that, that allows you to finish a whole book fast, uh, in the car, you know, uh, while we're going somewhere, I pull out a book and read it. Um, before bed, the thing that I'm trying to do right now is instead of play on my phone, right. And all that blue light, right. While you are going to sleep, which is terrible for you, you won't sleep. Your quality will be terrible. I sit with my phone on the other side of the room now. And instead, I bring a book with me and I read about 15, 20 minutes and it makes me tired. Um, but, I, you know, I'm gaining knowledge, still uh, getting into that book. And um, it's a good way to go to sleep. And so, like, no, I, I think that that's a really great trait that people read and try to maximize reading um, throughout the day. You know, maximize, yeah, that those hours. So, um, so, you know, we're talking about, like, intellectualism and we're kind of correlating that with reading, right? Mm -hmm. um, and reading, reading for sure is on the decline. Um, but do you think that the two are correlate, directly correlated, like, because people are less reading, um, intellectualism may be down? Or do you think that there could be other mediums that people um, could watch intellectual videos you know what i mean because like so here's the thing right there's a lot of i watch a lot of stuff on youtube like there's a lot of really really um informational like youtube videos and like um ray dalio i don't know if you've seen how the economic machine works no um, i haven't he, seen that but okay yeah yeah he did like this whole um he's like this hedge fund investor guy that did this yeah. whole, like informational video about how to use the economy and all that um mm. and i'll see a video like that that you know will do like 50k views and then i'll see you know like an entertainment more like um non-intellectual video hit over a million views you know what I mean? so so i don't know do you think that there's a correlation between reading and the decline of reading and the decline of intellectualism or yeah do you think that maybe it's just like people are just don't care anymore you know there's better things to do than yeah. the intellectual quote unquote um well i think that i mean honestly that's a really great question i think that there's certainly other mediums besides book that one can use to you know acquire knowledge or to think you know listening to the great public speakers and videos like that you know professors whatever um but i definitely think that 
you know, I hold the belief and I, you know, I don't claim this to be scientific fact, uh, but I would be interested in looking this up, but I hold the belief that reading is the fastest way uh, to acquire knowledge. Um, and precisely, right. When an author, when you write something, uh, it's definitely way more complex than when you speak it. Right. Um, and so the ideas are very clear that the author wants to transfer over to another person to spread that idea. And so I think that when you read a book, you know, it, you're getting exactly the thoughts that the author wants you to have and you're getting, um, and you're getting it quickly. And so I, I think that my belief is that, you know, reading is, is the best way to acquire knowledge, but I definitely think there's other good ways. Um, and I don't know, do people care anymore or not care? Um, you know, well, this is kind of a question for you. It's like people complaining about not being successful, but then you say, well, here's a book that could help you, uh, you know, better your career or whatever. And they, oh, no, I don't want to, you know, so it's like people want to be successful, but they don't want to put in the hard work. I mean, do you think that's kind of what you, like, would you say that's not caring or like, what do you, um, you know, why do you, what do you think about that? Um, so I, as you were saying that, um, I don't know, there's this whole, and I, you know, we could, I'll bring it, I'll circle it back, how it could be correlated. But I think there's this whole um, attention span um, dilemma now. Um, so like our brains, I don't know, it's really satisfying for me to finish a book. Oh, right? like once, once you finish that book, and you read that last sentence and you close it, mm -hmm. you're like, man, like I finished this book in, in its entirety. Like that feels really good. Um, I could, you could read an entire book or you could go on TikTok and, and get satisfied every time you finish a video for 15, you know, like 15 seconds, right? Yeah, those, yeah. those dopamine hits, right? Yes. And so like, I, I and you know, I, I don't necessarily subscribe to the idea that social media is all bad. Um, but I think it could be that because we have access to these, all these dopamine hits, that it's training our brain to like, um, become adapted to that short attention span, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I 100% I agree with you um, that social media can definitely shorten our attention span. I think there's some scientific documentation on that too, some research papers, but I don't think social media is good or bad. I think it's amoral. Um, and I think we need to use it more for good though. I think that people can get creative with it and spread knowledge that can help people and empower them. And that's really what I'm trying to do is post things that are positive, that are useful, that are insightful, and to really just help people um, just to better their lives and to better their world. And, you know, I think that's what social media is missing right now. I think a lot of it has made us more self-centered. You know, you see a lot of selfies, you see a lot of me, 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 um, and less, you know, things that could better everybody else. So really, I think yeah. that might just be a, a, a reflection of ourselves. Yeah. But no, I definitely think that, yeah, you know, it's, it's a definitely a lot more pleasurable. You know, this is like almost a whole nother concept. It's like, we're not kind of getting into do people, would people rather pursue something that is hard or something yeah. that's pleasurable? TikTok, most of the time, very pleasurable, right? You could do it for like five hours. It's almost like crack, right? <laughs> Getting a book, it's somewhat hard. It might make you think. Um, but, the okay, you, you know what? This is for you because I know you're a big reader. I find that pleasurable now to read a book that makes me think. Maybe at first when I was getting into reading, probably not. But now I find reading to to really be like pleasurable and like, oh, yes, yes, good. This is good stuff. Like, I never thought about it that way. So I don't know. Like, is there – is it – personality is it like where does why do why do i find it pleasurable and some people don't i mean it could be personal a personality trait it could be you know again how we started off this podcast you know we're conditioned to kind of associating reading with bad right like yeah. you know you you, you don't want to crack open crack open a book because like you associate it with those like you want to you want to read what you want to but when you're forced to read what you don't want to, it kind of has that bad association. Um, but yeah, I was just about to make that point actually about how being intellectual is hard 
but I make that statement like, you know, with the caveat because it may not be for everyone. Um, so, and, and, you know, again, um, I was thinking about, it takes, I don't know about you, but it takes a lot of time to like sit down and like read a book, right? Everyone is like, you know, I think that, um, you know, especially in America, there's like this whole productivity wheel that you have to kind of complete, right? Yeah. Um, but w- which is why I think the rise of audiobooks and Audible and, and those different companies, I think those are 100% on the rise, right? Like, um, but yeah, I, I really think about that whole, like, productivity wheel. Maybe that's why people aren't reading as much is because they don't have the time to read it or maybe... But I mean, then again, right? Like if, if you really like something, like you'll make time. For it, yeah. Yeah. You know? I mean, I, the whole time thing, is, you know, people always tell me uh, like, cause I, I encourage a lot of people to read and they say, Oh, Elijah, I don't have time for that. And the, and the funny thing to me though, is, you know, they got time for their 30 minute Netflix show. They got time to serve social media for hours. I mean, if you go, right. If you have an iPhone, I don't know about Android, but if you go on iPhone, go to your settings, you go to your screen time. I mean, people are averaging at least an hour a day on Instagram, okay? An hour a day. If you just spend 10 minutes to read 10 pages, a page a minute, right? You're going to be a whole lot better, and you're going to finish that book probably, you know, I don't know, 10 pages, you know, at least, you'll probably finish it in two weeks, depending on if you do it consistently. Right, yeah. Is it that people don't have time or is it that they use that as an excuse? To me, it's an excuse. Um, And people love excuses, you know, but I I found that when I stop making excuses, that's when I really start to advance myself and start to grow as a person. You know, excuses, excuses just take the power out of your hands and your control. Um, But taking ownership of your life and, and your situation, that's when you really start to grow as a person and start to make progress. That's, it's kind of what I have learned um, in my young 18 years of life. But yeah. um, so on this whole intellectualism kick, right? Yeah. Um, it's it's harder to be intellectual, right? But why why is it that people seem to be turned off to try and pursue that course? Like, even first of all, like, what's the point of wanting to be intellectual, right? It's I, I would think you want to be intellectual in order to use that knowledge and help either empower, you know, your point of view or, or what you believe in the world, what you believe um, to be true in the world. Right. Yeah. Um, so, so do you think that people are starting to become pessimistic, pessimistic in a way, because they feel like even if you are intellectual, it's really hard to actually impact the world yeah no. you know, i i don't know um about that but you know you bringing this up is brilliant because um it, it reminds me of you know what i learned about socrates right so you're the philosophy major you correct me if i'm wrong but socrates uh he believed that philosophy should be practical to improve humans lives Right. It was not this abstract thing that has no practical use, but it was knowledge that could be applied to make people's lives better. And and that's something that that's probably one of my biggest criticisms with like the school system. It's like we're learning a lot of stuff that we're not going to apply. Right. Knowledge just to know things is um, I don't want to say useless, but uh, it's just I don't know. I don't know what the right word is, but applied knowledge is great because that, you know, that allows you to change things, practical knowledge, right? Um, learning for the sake of doing, right? You learn something so that you can solve a problem. You know, I never read a book just to read a book. I read a book to solve a problem. If I'm having, if I want to improve my life, I might read a philosophy book. Um, if I want to, you know, uh, learn more about how I can spread the word of a certain thing to raise awareness um, for Deshin, I read a marketing book. Um, if I want to learn more about investing, I read an investing book, right? And so I use I use books as a tool. Um, that's how that's how I view them. You know, that that's another thing, Brian. How do you how do you view books? Um, interesting because, like a few days ago, I forget who was it that said this. I think it was Bill Gates or something. It was yeah. some successful person. He said, "Oh no, it was um, Seth Godin." 
You, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I love Seth, bro. I love yeah. Seth. Seth. Seth made a comment. He said that he reads the book. He reads books until he gets the point. So, so if the author makes a good enough case within the first chapter, mm-hmm. um, he'll just ex- accept the rest to be true, right? So he reads the book up until he gets the point, right? Um, and so, I mean, that seems inherently more like kind of, kind of how you were saying, tool-based, right? He's using a book as a tool yeah. to use it until he, it's, it's over, you know? Um, but I, I view it the same way. Um, but I view it more of like when I'm curious about something, I tend to first look at what are like the most um, impactful books in that field, right? So like investing, yeah. you know, once I first got into investing, I was like, okay, what are like the top 10 books here? Um, and one of the first ones that came up was The Intelligent Investor, right? Yep. Dan Grant. Um, so that's how I, when I'm curious about something or when I come across someone that is interesting, I tend to see the books that they've written and I'll order them because I don't know, hearing them, like how you mentioned earlier, hearing them speak versus seeing what they've written, um, you kind of see like a different side of them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, uh, written sentences are way more complex. They're just way more complex, which means they're more detailed. They're more thoughtful, right? When you're writing, you're, 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 in, that's the only way to really engage in full critical thinking because you're able to erase certain things, clarify certain points. You're able to think about it. But when you're speaking, you know, words are kind of just coming out, you know, like streams of consciousness. So it's not really, uh, refined and, and, mm-hmm. and kind of perfected um and that's why i think you know, reading is just it's honestly I, I i i love reading like reading is a an asset now um and the thing i learned too that i would encourage people listening is when you read you get better at it like you get real fast at it you learn how to um just read books like nothing you learn how to uh when to pull a book out when you have free time you know like if you're uh, you know, in the car, car ride or a train ride, whatever. Um, and you just get really good at it and you build that habit and you start to, um, associate it with more positivity. And so, yeah, no reading. Uh, yeah, I think reading is, is really one of the main points of this podcast. I just keep seeing it come up. And I think, I think that's probably, I think that's the greatest evidence that, uh, intellectualism is dying, but like, what do you, so I'm interested to ask you this since you, you, you major in philosophy. What do you think about, you know, philosophy in America today? Like, do you see it? Do you see people not really studying it or really, you know, doing anything with it or? Um, yeah, I think philosophy is one of those things where it's, it's a lot of people see it as it's interesting for the first 20 minutes and then after that people are just like okay this is kind of like this is too heady like you know i don't really care you know it doesn't really matter that much you know um and so it's 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 a good way to to it's a good conversation starter but people don't really like to dive deep in things you know yeah um and and you know which is which sucks because there's a lot of really really good um material and principles that you can learn from all these philosophers you know yeah, no, Brian, you just brought up another thing that just hit me. Like, you're, this, is, this is why we're a good team. Um, you just said that people don't like to go deep anymore. And, and that makes me think that a lot of things are surface level now. And um, I want to know, do you think that social media has created that in, in basically the digital world? And here's what I mean by that. Like, we have Tinder now, right? And to me, personally, I think Tinder – is not a good way to meet uh, people for relationships. And, and the reason why is because you're really just going off of surface level stuff. You see a photo of them, you know, you don't know their personality um, and all that. Uh, you don't know what they sound like. You know, it's really just, you're looking at them from the surface and that's where you're making your judgment purely off of looks. All right. We do that with Instagram too. You know, how many likes someone has um, your followers, you know, what they, what they look like and all that. Like basically what I'm getting at here is like, we don't engage in deep conversations anymore, but instead we just have these really surface level, you know, um, 
what you see is what it is. And it's like, no, that's not always the case. If you really analyze and you think deeply about things, things are a lot more meaningful than what they appear. Yeah. Um, interesting. You know, when I, when I interned uh, over the summer with Gary, um, one of the uh, fireside chats that we had about this whole social media thing, and I think you've heard this before too, that, and you said earlier, social media is like amoral, right? Yeah. Um, he would, he would often say that social media is just like a mirror, right? It's just a reflection of, reflection, yeah. of, of human psychology and human, how humans act. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, one, I think he even mentioned this. Um, I mean, everything is kind of surface level to some degree, right? Like, you know, when you see a stranger, um, you know, your brain already makes a lot of surface level judgment sometimes you yeah. know, how they dress how they look how their hair is um so you're already kind of making surface level judgments and gary would often say that social media kind of ex i guess maybe a, a word is exploits or capitalizes on no, that human right. psychology yeah on that on that psychology of like humans already make surface level judgments so you know it's it's already it's it's I guess inherent to human psychology, you know. Um, yeah. yeah. No doubt. But for sure, though, for sure, I think that um, social media is like, and you know, this could be off topic, but um, I remember him saying about the whole popularity thing and mm -hmm. social media. So, like, you know, a lot of people care about like their follower counts, yeah. right, and, and and their like counts and all this stuff. Um, but like, and then he would say like, you know, in 1915, it was the same thing. You know, it was how popular, how popular are you amongst the, the high school students, right? What's your popularity then? So like psych psychologically, it's the same thing, just in different environments. Um, but I mean, at the same time, right? It's like in 1915, how big was your high school? Like what, a hundred people? Yeah. Now you're dealing with, you know, potentially thousands of people. Definitely. Um, so, yeah. So, that was a little bit off topic. What was our point? Well, we're trying to get at, like, you know, um, is, is surface level, you know, is basically the digital world creating such a surface level that we don't engage in, in intellectualism anymore. Any, we don't go deeper into things. Um, and... And that, that's kind of what I think at least a little bit because I mean when you were forced to read a book when reading was the only entertainment that existed right before television you had to go deep you can't just I mean you can't just go surface level with a book there's no such thing books are deeper but now we have television it's very visual so you can't just you can't just have uh, surface level stuff now um, and my whole thing with that, it's like, is that going to, is that going to leave a negative effect on society long term? You know, I mean, this, this social media stuff is really new. I mean, what was Facebook created? 2003? Yeah. Early 2000s. And Facebook, that's, you know, that's the very first. But a lot of social media now, I feel like has really taken off since like, 2010 2012 you know that's when instagram you know now you have you know you have instagram twitter snapchat tiktok you had vine you have uh what was that thing uh i wasn't even old enough but it was myspace um yep. you have all these platforms now it's really a big big thing and people are pursuing uh they're pursuing that over um or they're pursuing okay they're pursuing entertainment over uh intellectual thinking and entertainment is so much more accessible now because of the digital world and so is the digital world and entertainment right people just wanting to pursue entertainment is that going to leave a negative effect on our society i think yes I mean, the world that I would love to live in, and look, I like to have fun too. Like, let's not get that wrong. Um, but 
the world I would love to live in would be a world where people think about things. They think deeply. They, they like to get all the information and come up with a good analysis and debate respectfully amongst their peers, you know, um, and come up with decisions like that. You know, when we look at politics today, as of right now, uh, I was just watching the last Democratic debate, uh, a lot of yelling, a lot of, you know, name calling, um, and that's what we see in politics today. And that's just not productive politics, in my opinion. Productive politics would be like, we could sit down and debate, you know, we have data to back it, right? We could really get things done. Um, but yeah, I, I guess, I guess what I'm getting at is like, you know, a culture that pursues purely entertainment is a culture that is destined to fail, in my opinion. But a culture that pursues intellectualism is a culture that is going to advance humanity forward and that is going to be a culture that uh, overall increases the well-being of society, right? So I don't know how we do that. Um, but do you, do you agree with that before we get into how we do that? Or? For sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think uh, definitely entertainment has been, you know, they've both been more easily accessible, right? Um, entertainment and, um, and intellectualism. But people gravitate towards intellectualism, uh, or excuse me, towards entertainment because it's easier. Yeah. Right? It's a pleasure um, versus, yeah. Yeah, it's easier to, to consume. Um, and it's harder to think about the intellect. You know? mm -hmm. um, but you know, I definitely think that there's a a uh, like a what would you say eighty twenty? Yeah. Eighty twenty split. Eighty uh, intellectualism, twenty entertainment. You know. Um, but you're a hundred percent right. A society that was a, that was definitely a, a great soundbite. A, a a society that pursues intellectualism will be way more successful than a society that pursues it. You know? Yeah, no, and um, you know why? So something that you said earlier is like, why would people pursue intellectualism, right? Because you know why work why work hard for nothing with no reward. And why work hard when entertainment is so easy to obtain? It's, I mean, it's everywhere. You know, YouTube, I got bored of that. I'm going to go to TikTok, watch some sports. You know, um, I love sports, by the way. I love TikTok, too, and YouTube. Um, but, yeah, why would people do that? For me, the reason why I like it so much is because I like to solve problems and, and all that. So I see a use for it, and I think maybe people don't see use for it. Would you agree that might be that might be the reason? Like people just don't see a use to pursue these ideas. Why should I open up a philosophy book? Um, yeah, I mean for sure. Like, and and again, you know, it could be that whole pessimistic thing where it's like, okay, um, what's the point of acquiring all that knowledge if I don't really think I can use it? You know. Um, maybe it's just a matter of, you know, I don't know if the word inspiring people or putting more people in, in positions of power where they feel like they can be, um, impactful, you know, um, like, you know, like for example, Bill Gates, right? Like think about all the resources and power that he has, right? Think about it. If he were to read those eight books, think about how better he can make his decisions, um, because he's in a position of power, you know, so, Definitely. so I'm not saying ev everyone should be in a position of power, but at least everyone should, um, have that pathway where they can be in a position of power. And position of power is kind of a loose term, right? Like, yeah, power. So this kind of ties in perfectly. The one thing that I would tell people right now to really understand the, the benefit of pursuing intellectualism is read a financial book today, right? Learn how to invest because money is power, essentially, right? The more money you have, the more resources you can acquire, the more powerful you are, okay? If you can, if we can get people to read books or really just pursue the idea of learning how to invest, right? They don't teach that in school. 
Um, but if people really pursue that, they can make additional, you know, passive income. They can make additional sources of, of income that can make their life better. Uh, and that right there, which I think that right there would be a practical use. And when you see, wow, this book really taught me and I was able to make better decisions. Now I learned that investing isn't a gamble. It doesn't have to be that you can invest intelligently that you can, you know, there's certain things that you can do to make good decisions when it comes to investing and that you can be profitable a lot of the time, right? If people realize that and then they learned it and then they did it, they're going to go back to it. It's going to become that habit, you know, routine, re, uh, what is it? Re, what's the habit loop? It's routine. Uh, no, it's the cue, routine, reward. You know, the cue, okay, kind of like the, in this scenario, it's kind of like the problem, need more money. Routine, read book, right? Intelli or read, read investing book. Reward, wow, I made more money, right? Habit, loop, boom, boom, boom. Mm. And um, I think that right there would be a, a good start, but that's kind of what I wanted to end this uh, conversation with is uh, how, do you, how do you think we promote? and get people to, uh, because we both agree that intellectualism is a good thing. How do we, uh, it, it's good for society. How do we get people to pursue it then? How do we get them more? Yeah. Um, I think it starts with those, you know, elementary, middle school, high school kind of classes, you know, like that, I think that's, where people are first introduced with knowledge and you know its power um and then you know progressively making it enjoyable trying to trying to create those habits of enjoying um pursuing knowledge right um and and again you know i think if if someone is curious about something right they're gonna google it they're going to look at books they're gonna look at videos and so I think somehow, and I don't, I, you know, I don't know exactly what that looks like, but trying to infuse curiosity within the youth um, will set them up to be wanting to pursue that knowledge yeah. right? and, and wanting to be intellectual. Brian, do you think that the school system kills our curiosity? Like, do you think, do you think it kills it or do you think it stimulates it, like grows it? Well, I think its purpose is to stimulate it. But right now, um, I wouldn't say it's that as stimulating as it should be, right? Yeah. Um, I, I think that, um, you know, people, people go there, well, A, they have to go there, at least in um, but, but while they're there, they're kind of turned off to that whole pursuing knowledge and being curious, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I think almost every school has, you know, that one really, really good teacher that is like great at speaking and great at, um, you know, stimulating that curiosity. But I would say for the most part, um, yeah, it's, it's, it kind of kills it a little bit, you know? Yeah. You know, a, a lot of the times it feels like I'm not, um, it feels like I'm going through the motions at school. Like, you know, it's something that I have to do. It's not something that I'm learning, but it's just something that I have to do. And that doesn't seem right to me. I think um, school needs to, if you're going to expose people to different subjects, you got to get them, you got to get them interested and curious about them. And they'll pursue it more, right? we got to create a school system, I think, where people get to pursue their curiosities and their interests. Um, Kind of like, I think high school, you should kind of in ninth grade, my thing right now, and you know, I'll just say it, it's, I think that people should be able to pursue their majors in a sense. Like if you are interested in becoming a, uh, you know, someone that works in biology, all your classes are biology based, kind of like STEM. What, I don't know if you've heard of this. Program, yep, but yep. Kind of like that, but on steroids, right? So you take a biology class, you have a few of those, your math is biology based, um, your history um, is biology based, you know, you're going to really go into all the medicine. Yep. That they but here, but okay, so with this idea, right, and I debate this with myself, and I want to ask you this, how, that would be personalized 
uh, knowledge. And that's what you need in order to have a career, right? If you're going to be a, a, a scientist, you need to be, you know, if you're going to be a climate scientist, you need to study all the environmental sciences and stuff like that. That's specialized knowledge, right? We would agree, though, society still needs generalized knowledge, correct? Like Americans need to know, they need to know history. We need to know history of our presidents and all and how the government works and all that stuff. How do you balance the two? That's my biggest thing. It's like, how do we balance the two? Mm. How do you know where it's personalized, specialized for what the person wants to do and they're going to be interested and they're going to love it because mm. it's just what they want to do. But how do we also incorporate that generalized information and how much is enough? What is, what is enough? That yes, is yes. a great debate that if we answer that question, we figure that out, we come up with a compromise with those two, I think we can create an amazing school system, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a tough one. Like, where's the cutoff between, okay, this is enough general knowledge that you need? Because, I mean, let's be honest, right? Like, a lot of the stuff that we, the general knowledge that we learn, I mean, we're probably not going to use, right? So what's the cutoff between... Okay, obviously everyone needs to know what two plus two is, right? Yeah. Obviously yeah. everyone needs to know general history. But like, what's the cutoff where, okay, this thing that you are going to learn, it's, it's not ROI positive anymore, you know, for you. It could be for someone else, right? Mm. Um, so yeah, so having those personalized tracks, I think for sure will be something that I think is an interesting um, idea. But it's it's difficult to see where that cutoff is, you know. And I think this ties right back to books. If you're interested in the subject and you are, you know, you're into reading now, you can read and attain that as much knowledge as you want on that subject just by getting all the books on it, right? So, like Brian and I would like investing, so we can go get all those investing books, The Intelligent Investor, um, reading a book called um, uh, The University of Berkshire Halfway. You, know, you can just get all those books right there and pursue that because we like investing. Um, a person that likes, you know, uh, certain science, they can get all those science books, you know, physics books, whatever. I, so I think that's when reading really helps too with that. But yeah, man, it's, it's, it's a great, great debate um, that I always have with myself because I, I think that education is really – really the fundamental of society like it's it's really the foundation if you improve the education of society i think that you'd have a more advanced society techno like in a, a technological way um a more moral society right i don't know about you but don't you ever notice that people that are highly educated and that can entertain both sides right was it aristotle that said that, that uh, an educated mind can entertain two ideas without a second yep, yep. something like that right Educated people don't get, they, they just have a respectful debate um, uh, with each other, right? Because they're using the more logical part of their brain. But people that are not as educated, they're not using that part of their brain. Instead, they're relying on the limbic part of their brain, the emotional part of the brain. So then they just let their emotional animalistic behavior out and they start yelling at each other, sometimes getting physical, uh, you know, fighting with each other. Um, I, I truly believe that the more educated and the more intellectually centered as society is um the more moral it's going to be too right i think yeah. so like, you see what i'm saying education really um interesting yeah i 100 percent agree a correlation with the, the overall quality of a society that's what i'm getting at and that's why mm -hmm. i'm very very passionate about uh, education and improving it because right now we we everybody agrees it's broken like i was talking to my teacher about it today right and i'm in high school um you know, it's like, we need to let teachers teach. The politicians don't like our education. The students don't like our education. The administration doesn't like our education. The, you know, nobody likes it, but we have to do it because it's still the law, right? The way it's been written, but nobody likes it. So it's like, we need to change that so teachers can teach. Right now, I feel like teachers, they kind of like, yeah, I wish I didn't have to teach this, but I have to teach it anyways. I wish I could teach you things that I think would actually be useful to you. And so, um, I guess I'm just kind of ranting now, but yeah, I, you know. The, oh yeah, I, I like it. I agree. 100%. The school system is just kind of like, you know, but yeah, you, so you would agree that like the education or the overall education of a society is correlated to the quality of a, 
for sure, dude. I think I think education is like the the uh, backbone of society. I mean, you you could you could correlate education to a million different things because I mean, a more educated educated population, you know, is is less likely to commit crimes or less likely to 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 do a bunch of things and again think more logically about things, right? Yeah. The, the the public discourse, the debates even become better. Um, and because those debates become better, we, we get closer to a, a better solution, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do you, um, do you think for sure. objective truth? Like, because we oh. know, I mean, when we say that this is, you know, is there absolute truth? Uh, some. So you, absolute truth. So you do think that they do exist, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I would say they, they would have to exist. Um, I mean, okay, Brian, uh, go ahead and say that absolute truth doesn't exist just for – just just do it. Just say Absolute it. truths don't exist. Is that absolutely true, Brian? <laughs> it's a paradox. It, it's, it's self, oh, yeah, it's true. Self-defeating logic. So I definitely agree. Yeah, there is objective truth. The reason I ask that question is because – you said that, you know, we, we get better, as, you know, as we're debating, we get, you know, advancing. Are we advanced? Like, is there an ultimate truth, an ultimate area that we're advancing to? Like, is there a target that we're, you know, uh, getting closer to? Like, is that what you, is that kind of what you meant? Or did I, I don't know, did I take that out of? Um, sort of. I mean... An overarching objective truth, I mean, everyone can be better, right? Yeah. Everyone can be more moral, maybe more educated. Yeah. Um, but I, but I, I would... Yeah, go ahead, yeah. go ahead. No, I, go ahead. I was just going to say that, like, um, like, there's just certain, there's some things that are just 100% true. Like, truth isn't relative, right? Um in a lot of ways, I don't think it is. I think there's some things that are just 100% true and it's like binary, it's either true or false, it's not relative. Uh, so some people would say that truth is relative um, and I, I, don't, I don't agree. I don't think that's the case. But um, yeah, we, are, we have covered a lot of, lot of things. This has been really, really interesting. Um, what, uh, you have anything like else that you want to add or uh, about intellectualism? I mean, we covered a lot of stuff. You know, I feel like we could dive a lot. You know, the next episode, I think some of the stuff that we covered here, um, I feel like we could dive deeper in like a next in the next episode. Yeah, you know? definitely, definitely. Yeah, no, we gotta uh, plan that next episode and figure it out. Um, but no, I think that. You know, once again, I'm 18 years old, Elijah Stacy. Brian, you're 20, 20 years old. Yep. Uh, and so I think Brian and I, we just feel really passionate about getting people to have these conversations, especially our generation, the youth, the younger crowd, um, just to get them to start thinking about these things because the quicker they think about it, the, you know, the quicker they can develop and um, pursue these pursue these uh, things um and so yeah that's kind of like you know that's kind of the whole point of this podcast is to plant that seed you know plant that yep. seed get people thinking sure. and like yeah uh education ed intellectualism uh thought-provoking stuff that is that's important 100 percent, very very important i think that's kind of what we agreed on uh when coming down to it but um yeah. Yep. All right, cool. Anything anything else you want to add or is that good? Uh, you know, I would just conclude by saying, you know, read read books, right? Uh pick up a book today with your interest, right? Maybe it's nonfiction, maybe it's fiction, whatever it is. Find something that you're genuinely interested in. Just read a page a day, 10 pages a day, you know, a minute a day, 10 minutes a day, something. Just set a goal. Um and just really try it out. Give reading another chance if you've dismissed it. Um, and, and perhaps it will help improve your life. 
Uh, you know, in fact, I would almost say it will improve your life if you truly do read enough and pursue it with um, all, all your all your focus, all your energy. Um, and so that's what I would conclude with. Awesome. I 100% concur by that statement. And then I think that, you know, trying to figure out what you're curious about. And like, I mean, I think every, almost everyone is sort of curious about something. Right? Yeah, definitely. Um, so, so just trying to, you know, what, what videos do you more gravitate towards? You know, what, what do you really spend, what are you really curious about? Um, and, and try to, you know, dive a little bit deeper on, on whatever you're curious about. Definitely. Is what I would conclude with. Yeah, definitely. So this has been episode two, where we discuss intellectualism. Uh, this has been episode two, conversations with Brian and Elijah. And we'll see you on the next podcast. Later.